Shalom, Yasha'ala. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, and His only begotten Son's true name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, who the world only calls Jesus Christ. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, salutations to brothers to the four corners of the earth, teaching His word and truth and sincerity. And this quick lesson today is going to be about um, prayer and how the Heavenly Father is not obligated to accept or hear your prayers. Okay? And we're going to go over a few scriptures covering this issue. Because many people of the world just believe that the Lord has to hear your prayer. That he has to accept it. That he's uh, under bondage. Uh, basically to you to accept your prayer like you're in some type of control when that's not the case because we serve the Heavenly Father and when I say we speaking of Yasha Allah Israel okay the Israelites us as the people and only a, the elect is serving him on this side as of, as of right now you know but uh, as a as a whole, speaking of the nation of Israel or the children of Israel, we serve the Heavenly Father. He does not serve us. Okay? See, we are obligated to follow His instructions, the law, statutes, and commandments which He's given us. But He is not obligated to uh, uh, accept or hear our prayers. Okay? The Heavenly Father can turn His ear from our prayers uh, uh, like He did before. You see? But before I start, I want to go into this word, uh, oblige, okay? It says, no matter of fact, we can start on the obligation first. It says, obligation for, for the 1300s from old French, obligation, obligation, which means a duty, a responsibility. You see? Early 13th century and directly from Latin, obligationum, uh, nominative, obligatio, an engaging or pledging, literally a binding, but rarely used in a sense, noun of an action from past particle stem of obligare, see oblige, the notion is of binding with promises or by law or duty. It's not the Lord's duty or responsibility to accept our prayers it's not his duty to do it okay he's that's not something he's commanded to do he does it because he's a, a graceful a merciful merciful power okay but that's not his duty you see he does not have to take the prayer of the wicked which the scriptures say if he does not want to because the, the prayers of the wicked are abomination to him you see but he hears what the prayers of the righteous now let's go to uh, the oblige, right? From the 13th century means to bind by oath. From old French, obligier, engages one faith, commit oneself, or pledge. From the Latin obligier, to bind, bind up, bandage, figuratively to put under obligation. Uh, to bind, modern meaning to make someone indebted by conferring a benefit or kindness. It's from the 1560s. See, the Lord is not obligated to accept your prayer. Okay? Especially if you're the wicked. He is not obligated to do anything to us. Like I said before, and I'll say it again. We serve Him. He is our creator. He created us. We did not create Him. So we can't make Him do anything that He doesn't want to do or have to do. Okay? Better, better saying that. Because he don't have to do anything. Now, when you look at this, right? 2 Chronicles 7.14. He did mention this to us. He says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then will I turn. So look, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal heal their land. You see? So like I said, the Lord is so gracious and he's merciful. He told us what? If we was to humble ourselves, right? 
to, to seek him and turn from our wicked ways, then he will hear from heaven and forgive our sin. And what? Heal our land. But if we wasn't to take this action, then what? You think he's obligated to do so? No. Okay? No. So let's go into a, a few scriptures I want to get. We're going to go to uh, Proverbs 28 and 9. And it reads, it says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. You see, so if you turn your ear from the law, where's the law? You find the law in the scriptures. Okay? You turn your ear from the law, from what, what the Lord commanded us, what he said, your prayer shall be an abomination. Okay? He don't have to reg uh, 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 regard your prayer. Because now it's what? Uh, abomination to him You see Now let's For better edification Let's go into the word Abomination In that In that verse You see So Proverbs 28 and 9 Since he that turneth his ear From hearing the law Even his prayer Shall be abomination from the Hebrews. The Abba, the Waba, is a disgusting thing, abomination, and ritual sense of unclean food, idols, mixed marriages, and an ethical sense of wickedness. You see, and in the law, of what thou shalt have no other gods before me, uh, uh, uh thou shalt not uh, commit adultery. Uh, uh, the dietary law, which is the unclean foods, okay? So that's uh, taking your ear, turning your ear away from hearing the law if you do, do those type of things. You see? Idolatry. Uh, a thing that's morally disgusting. Okay? That, that's what an abomination is. You see? So if you do that, right? If he just turned his... Away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer should be an abomination. Isaiah 1 and 11. And it reads, it says, To what purpose is of the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and fat of fed beasts. I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of the he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who have required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Oblations, incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the, even the solemn meeting, you see? So them things end up becoming uh, uh, not a delight. The Lord, those things weren't a delight to the Lord anymore, okay? The sacrificial law. Because if you know anything, what our people was doing is our people would, uh, would do wickedly. Is they would already have prepared their, the, the wicked sacrifice before they committed their wicked act. And, and, and how did you uh, you do the certain things is what, when you committed a different sin, you shed it, uh, uh, the blood of a particular animal. Okay, and you went to the priest. And, you, and then you went to the priest. And that's how you handled that whole situation. But the Lord got fed up. And got tired of that. So he, he, he was done away with that. And your house that ended up becoming uh, the ultimate sacrifice for our people, okay? The land without blemish. Verse 14, it says, Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. You see? See, the Lord is not obligated. To hear or accept your prayers. It says, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Just showing you that the Lord does not have to uh, uh, accept your prayers. He is not subjected into, into doing that. Okay? Well, like I said before, the Lord is so gracious and merciful. You know, he, he, he hears the prayers of the righteous. 
you know, but unto the wicked, uh, the prayers are abomination. Basically, they just go up and they come right back down. And more importantly, you people are not even praying to the uh, uh, to the right name. Okay, you, you praying to the name of, of, of Jesus Christ and, and, and all these other names of madness. Well, the Lord's not hearing that, man. Okay. Let's get James 5 and 16. It says. Oh, come on, man. James 5 and 16. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You see? So, uh, the fervent prayer of the righteous man, you know, uh, has some type of uh, uh, power to it. Okay? Let's get another one. Let's get Psalm 66, verse 20. Right? It says, Blessed be the God which have not turned away my prayer. This is Dave, King David speaking. It says, Blessed be God which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. And if you know anything, what? King David was the apple of the Lord's eye. Okay, he was dealing with King David. You see? And he didn't turn his ear from King David when King David was praying to him. That's why he was, he was delivering King David through all them different uh, uh, troubles. You know? The enemies of such sort. Okay? Psalm 69 verse 13, it says, But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O the Most High, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. You see? Let's get, a, let's get another one. Proverbs 15 and 8. It says, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is in his delight. You see? It's the prayer of the upright, man. The one that's doing what he says. Okay? Hey, and like, like the scripture said, the Lord made us uh, upright, okay? To be the righteous. Proverbs 15 and 29, it says, The Lord is far from the wicked. But here is the prayer of the righteous. You see? So the Lord does not have to hear your prayer if you, you, you're doing your evil doings in evil ways. He does not have to hear it. That's why I said the Lord is far from the wicked. Right? He's far from you. Meaning he's not hearing you. But here is the prayer of the righteous. There's a difference. Let's go to Jeremiah 17. I mean... Uh, Seven, yeah, let, let's see what he told Jeremiah. Jeremiah 7 and 16, it says, and this, just listen how cold the Lord is and what he told Jeremiah. He said, therefore, pray not, for, not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry nor prayer for them. So he told Jeremiah when he was dealing with our people, because we know uh, uh, Jeremiah was dealing with our people that was hard-headed and didn't want to listen to, oh, hell no. What he, what, he, what he was saying to them, right? So the Lord told Jeremiah, he put that spirit on them and says, Therefore, pray not for this. People neither lift up a cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. So he told Jeremiah, don't even pray for these people because I'm not even going to hear thee, okay? Don't even do it. You see? So, even going back to what? He's not obligated to hear your prayer. Okay? 1 Peter 3, verse 12, it says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Right? And he's watching over the righteous. And his ears are open to their prayers. Whose prayers? The righteous' prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. You see? So it tells you the Lord is against people that do evil, that are doing wrongdoings, that doesn't follow his law, statutes, and commandments, doesn't do what he say. Okay? He's against that. Contrary to what popular belief, 
what has been taught out here 